Okay, so there's two types of questions that you have to ask yourself on this one is what type of practice do you want to have? Is it going to be mobile or brick and mortar? And what is the pay structure going to be like? Are you going to go 100% cash? Are you going to do cash or Medicare? Are you going to go out of network? So these are some questions that we're going to kind of look over right now is what type of practice do you want? Are you going to start off going mobile and then transition to a brick and mortar? Um, many PTs do that because they don't want they don't want to start up capital just to run into a brick and mortar. And plus, they're kind of playing it very, very conservative or they still have to have insurance. So they're working their standard care job, but they're just seeing people on the side um, doing mobile. Or are you going to jump right into it and do brick and mortar? So here or underneath here, I kind of went over some of the initial pros and cons of going mobile versus um, brick and mortar. You know, with a mobile practice, you know, you have decreased startup costs because all you really need is just insurance and whatever equipment you're going to bring bring with them. Obviously, you have a website and a payment processing thing, but it's a way it's way less cost per visit starting out mobile. Um, you can pay yourself more because of the decreased expenses. Um, you can still work a full time job and see some people um, on the side or even on weekends. And it gives you the flexibility to at least start with a side side hustle. Um, the cons is they have to drive around and go to patients' homes. Um, it's not really convenient because now instead of seeing a patient per hour or something like that, now you're going to have to drive plus see the patient, plus finish your checkout document, and then drive to the next place. So you may only see that patient one every one like an hour and a half. It all depends on how far you have to drive. So. With the travel, there's going to be increased costs and increased liability um, with with the auto coverage plus the gas plus liability insurance. You know, your liability insurance is going to have to cover your travel also. So you have to look into that stuff to make sure that if you're working and driving and you get into an accident, make sure that you are covered, not just because of your car, but your business and you also. And then <clears throat> you're going to be able to see fewer patients today doing mobile. Maybe you're seeing four to five patients a day versus a brick and mortar, you're seeing seven or eight, maybe even up to 10. Um, some of the pros in brick and mortar, this is what I did. Um, you have the patients come to you, which is very, very nice to do that. So you don't have to drive to them. You can see more patients per day. Um, it's more convenient and easier. All your equipment's right there. You don't have to travel with anything. You have no travel time and it's easy for the public to find you too. Um, Many people are looking for standard physical therapy and they, you know, there's some people who are looking for mobile, more of the older, older populations, or maybe some of the high net worth individuals who are influencers or um, famous almost, they'll, they'll want a private PT to come out to them. Um, but many times it's, it's easier for the public to find you if you have a brick and mortar, mortar location. Um, the cons of this, you may have an increased startup cost. When I started out, I took pretty much $3,000 of my own money and made it work and leased one room in a fertility center's building. So you can definitely make it work. You'll have increased expenses, meaning your cost per visit, because you pay rent, electricity, the water bill, et cetera, AC, and all that other stuff. So with a brick and mortar, your cost per visit will go up a little bit. And you may not be able to pay yourself as much compared to um, a mobile because mobile you'll be able to charge more and you have less expenses okay so brick and mortar you can still charge yourself more or whatever amount you want to but your expenses will be a little bit higher so you won't be able to pay yourself as much um, but those are some of the pros and cons with going into brick and mortar versus a mobile um, and you have to ask yourself what type of business do you want and with your with your setup and with your situation, what is the best option for you? Some people may have student loan debt and they need need their insurance. So maybe they'll start out um, doing mobile and treating patients on the side until they build up their caseload. Some people are good to go and they're in a good position where they can just jump right into it and go brick and mortar. I was blessed because I was in a position where I didn't have any kids. Um, we did have a mortgage. and but I had no ties, no real major expenses that I was able to just jump ship, open a brick and mortar clinic, and then just start hustling. So I was able, I was blessed in a point where I could just open up a brick and mortar clinic. I had everything set up, bam, I just went 
straight into brick and mortar and doing that. So again, you have to decide on which option is best for you at your given circumstance. And then, you know, then you strive towards the end goal. Another thing that I want to kind of talk about is, you know, what type of structure do you want your practice? Are you going to go 100% cash or are you going to add in some insurances? So there's a lot of different um, methods to this. If you're in the Facebook group, a lot of people are different and uh, doing their own thing. Many PTs are scared about the cash thing, so they grab the low hanging fruit, which is Medicare. Uh, Medicare is going bankrupt and they don't really pay that much per per visit and it messes up the whole practice model. So um, for me, I just want to kind of go over what I'm doing. And these are some of the options that you can think about to choose what is the best for you. So many people just go cash plus, plus Medicare um, and they do that. Maybe they're seeing a high Medicare population. Um, you can go into my Medicare policy or, you know, on that. I should have a blog about that. Plus it's in a lot of the other courses as you get into that of how I treat Medicare patients. But a lot of PTs go into cash plus plus Medicare. Um, there's hybrid practices also. Some have insurance contracts plus cash. The question is whether the insurance contract is going to pay you your rate. You don't want to dumb down your rate or make it cheaper just to accept some patients coming in the door. If your cash rate is 150, you don't want to be seeing Blue Cross and Blue Shield patients for $70. It's going to mess up everything. Um, some people go out of network practice and they bill out of network and they bill cash. You know, this is a tricky one because you'll hear people say, oh, I'm billing $400 a visit and they still have to jump through the hoops and submit claims and do all that stuff and you know, verify insurance benefits and do all that stuff. And many people can outsource this for any like 10 or 15% of the actual bill. So you'll still be able to bill more. Some of the people who I asked about this at a network bill is that, yeah, it ranges from anywhere from $100 to $400, but I average around $200 per visit, which is still great. And you have to ask yourself, is that more than what I can get for cash? And maybe it's worth going at a network with um, your clinic structure. You know, I haven't met someone yet that actually tells me, and to be honest, I question whether people are doing some insurance fraud with, because you have to set your fee schedule and you can't bill some people cash for 185 a visit, but then out of network practices, you overbill them like four or $500 for that. You're, you have to bill your fee schedule. So I'm not sure how they get around that necessarily. Um, so I still have some question marks about the out of network stuff. Um, and I like to interview other practice owners who are doing the out of network stuff just to see what they're doing. But whenever I ask, honestly, they never come clean on it and they just give me a few kind of weird answers. I've only met two people. Um, and they say that their average across the board over a year is like $150. Um, uh, sometimes they, you know, another option is your insurance practice and you're wanting to add on some cash based services with that. So that's great, too. You can I mean, if it's broke, if it's not broke, don't fix it type of thing. If you can make your insurance practice um, ROI positive with 10, 15 or 20 percent pre-tax profit margins and you want to add on some cash services, that's great, too. Um, for me. I'm 100% cash-based practice, and I have no relationship with any health insurance company. That's how. That's why I left standard care practice, and that's what I wanted to do. Um, my first years, I was a proof of concept business, and I was able to scale. And now I have a big practice. Now I'm looking to open up other practices. Um, but we have a practice of four four PTs right now, and we're looking to scale and um, go from there. But that's what I'm doing. That may not not be the best model for you. This is what I recommend. I think you can you can do this with the proper training, with the proper sales scripts and business systems and processes. You can definitely go 100% cash with this. And other times, some people go hybrid. They're treating patients in person part-time, but then they're going to do online stuff. And that's a whole other question, what's skilled PT versus non-skilled PT? And can you practice outside of your scope if you're not a part of the compact? So anyway, you know, we could talk for hours about some of these topics. What I wanted to do was just to kind of go over the pros and cons of mobile versus 
brick and mortar for you so you can make a good decision on what type of business that you want to start. And then list out some of the common um, pay structures of what other cash-based practices are doing. I obviously, you know, obviously I'm biased. I would go 100% cash. That's the whole purpose of why we're even doing this is to you know get away from standard insurance and limitations and all the BS that that they bring. Um, but ultimately, you have to decide on what business model is best for you and, and your practice, and then you can make a decision from there. So um, this is you know pretty much what type of practice that you want to start. You have to decide kind of brick and mortar versus online, and then what type of um, pay structures or whether you're going 100% cash, whether you're going to Medicare, whether you're going to insurance, or whether you're doing a hybrid.